Well, our blessed people, the Lord Jehovah has spoken with me. And the Lord, in a very tremendous conversation, He has asked me to pass judgment, to speak the judgment of the Lord over the nations of the earth. And after speaking this judgment of the Lord over the nations of the earth, then I see a historic famine, a historic drought that I have never seen before, probably has never visited the earth, strike the nations of the earth. So there is a very, very shocking historic drought that is coming to the earth, and historic famine. It is so historic, I see the land, I see the land on the earth, totally dry, not even one leaf. So this is going to be a very shocking historic famine, and I don't see people. So it's going to take a toll on people. Again, the Lord Jehovah Yahweh, the mighty God of heaven, has commanded me to pass judgment upon the nations of the earth because of their heedlessness, their disobedience, their failure to pay attention to the current visitation of the Lord that is on. And this judgment, as I passed it, and then I saw a historic drought and famine strike the earth. It is so historic, I have never seen anything like that happen on the earth. There will be no rain. There will be no dew during all that time. And there will be no crop, no leaf on the ground. The Lord has done this at this time. And I do not know the exact time when this does take place whether it takes place within this dispensation before the church is taken, or it does take place in the dispensation of the Great Tribulation when the church will have been taken, taken away from the earth and taken into heaven. So this is what the Lord has said today. And I'm reading right now from the book, of, the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. He says, The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. And verse 12, he says, Man will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. And so, the Lord Jehovah has asked is two most dreadful prophets to step forward and strike the earth with a historic judgment, the judgment of the Lord. And when I stepped forward and struck the earth with the judgment of the Lord as I had been commanded, as I was commanded by Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Yahweh, then a historic famine and drought hit the earth. It is so historic, there is no rain. The heavens are totally closed, and there is no water, no rain, no dew, no precipitation, and the soil becomes totally dry, not even one leaf. And then I see the massive ministry of the two most dreadful prophets becoming very massive, roving and roaming around the nations of the earth during this ominous judgment, this tremendous judgment. 
Now we've read from Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12, in which the Lord says he would send a unique, a strange famine to the land. Not an ordinary famine for food or water, thirst for water, but he's speaking of a drought, a famine of the words of the Lord. So this prophecy that the Lord has given, this judgment is given, is dual, is two-faceted, because you have the physical famine that will take place upon the face of the earth, physical drought and famine, and then spiritual drought and famine that will also strike the earth. And the physical famine is destructive, yes, but the spiritual famine is far more destructive and devastating than the spiritual famine. Because the spiritual drought and famine essentially devastates the soul eternally. In the physical drought, you could say people probably receive the Lord and be born again. But all this is happening because they have refused to listen to the words of the Lord, to listen to the instruction of the Lord. And again, I do not know whether this happens before the rapture has taken place or it happens after the rapture. The same way with war, the nuclear war coming to Iran, the prophecy I gave September, if I remember well, about September 27th, the year 2005, when I was in Mbeya, Tanzania, then the Lord spoke with me then, and also continued to speak when I came back to, 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 uh, to Kenya. The nuclear war, the two nuclear missiles that I see coming and striking the nuclear facility at the foot of a mountain in the desert. There is a nuclear facility, I think it may be Natanz nuclear center in Iran, that is sitting at the foot of a mountain in the desert, and I see the two nuclear missiles that come, their tail, the tails are copper, and they rotate anti-clockwise as they have been shot. And then they strike the nuclear facility in Iran at the foot of a mountain in the desert, and it blow, blows up with the hugest fire. I have never seen such fire. The earth has never seen such fire. So it becomes a huge flame, and you have these little, 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 little flames within the big flame, and the flame goes almost as far as the sky is and as far as east is from west. It will be a shocking war. And it's the little flames that made me understand that it's a nuclear war. And I say from September 27, 2005, that I do not know whether that war takes place after the rapture, the events of post-rapture, or that war takes place in this time. But you can see that from 2005 until now, that war has not taken place. Probably there is a movement towards war now. But like I said, I did not know when that prophecy would be fulfilled. The same thing here today, I do not know whether this famine, this drought, the shutting of heaven that I have done on this day, strictly based on the words of my tongue, I have shut the skies over the earth. I do not know whether this is what takes place in the Great Tribulation for three and a half years, or this happens before the church is taken up into paradise in heaven. But this should be a very important lesson to the nations, that people should repent and be righteous and be holy and receive Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior and be ready for the glorious kingdom of God. The famine for the hearing the words of God is also such a terrible famine. As much as the physical famine is bad, but this could be worse 
the spiritual famine. Because you see also in the same dispensation, when the church has been taken away, it's only the two prophets of the Lord that walk across the land with the light. That's why they become the two lights. The lamp stands that stand before the Lord of all the earth because only they now transmit the gospel and it's a terrible time when the entire earth is worshipping Satan is lost, is in apostasy. Including the building of the tribulation temple, the apostate temple in Jerusalem. The activities of the Antichrist and the false prophet, but these two prophets will counter and it will be such a bruising battle, you don't want to be here. I cannot share with you the details, because you will be shocked. But all you need to understand is that you need to be ready at all times. All times for the glorious coming of the Messiah. This is an unusual curse, judgment of the Lord. He says, the Messiah is coming. This is he about whom it was written in the book of Malachi chapter 4. The sea, in those days I will send you Elijah, the terrible prophet of the Lord, who will restore all things, who will come and prepare the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah, turning the hearts back to the Father before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, the, the day when the Lord will come and strike the nations, take away his bride, and bring retribution upon the face of the earth. So remember that we are in this very critical and agey time this threshold hour when anything can happen to the church. It's important that the church repents, that everybody upon the face of the earth reject evil and repent. There is so much homosexuality upon the face of the earth. There is sexual lust, sexual immorality, sexual sin, sexual perversion, pornography, there is deception, falsehood, false prophets, false gospels, false evangelists preaching. And you see them all over TV leading people aside, claiming that God is not holy. That once the grace came, you don't worry about, you don't need to worry about the issues of holiness. And yet Hebrews chapter 12, 14 ends by saying, for without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. And yet Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6, is a stark warning, a stern warning that you cannot abuse the grace, you cannot continue receiving Christ, that you are now born again, and then still live an unholy life. Live a life that is heedless, that does not obey the basic command of the law of the covenant, the new covenant of the grace. He warns and he says, if we continue sinning after we've received the truth, the knowledge of the truth, the grace, the normal sacrifice for sin is left for us. Again, the Lord has commanded me to strike the earth with an unbelievable famine, to shut the heavens over the earth. There will be no precipitation. There will be no dew. There will be no rain during all that time. And I see that a tremendous historic drought strikes the earth. The soil becomes red, almost maroon and dusty, and there is no leaf on the soil. I don't see the people. Then I see the two prophets of the Lord roving across the face of the earth. May you pray that this does happen after the church is taken away into paradise, into the new Jerusalem of God, into the safety of the rapture, the safety of heaven, May you be among the number of those blessed saints, the elect that have been taken up by the Lord. This is the time to be holy. The Messiah is coming. So may the nations repent and prepare the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah. I have seen the Messiah coming for a holy church. 
It's a tremendous day. It's a day of reckoning. It's a day of reality. It's the day of the truth. On that day, we will know who really was born again, who really was spirit-filled, who was really walking holy, who was righteous. Because the unrighteous and the unholy will never, ever see the glorious kingdom of my God. So this is a clarion call for this generation, to this generation that has seen so much blessing, so much love, to turn away from sin and be holy. Receive Jesus and be baptized in complete immersion. Receive the Holy Spirit and be baptized with fire. To purge the dross. To incinerate the sinful desires of your flesh and reconform, to create a conformity between your soul and the Spirit of the Lord. And to shun evil at all times. And to make a deliberate intentional effort to avoid wickedness and immorality and deception and lies. The Messiah is coming. Blessed people, the Messiah is coming. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. This is the voice of one calling in the wilderness, saying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. To the Shalom, may you all that are tuned in have the privilege of receiving Christ and being holy. And that may your wisdom never fail you on this one. That you may see the eternal glorious kingdom of God. To that, to that. To that, shalom.